obviously another big SEC weekend, uh, week two of SEC baseball for us, uh, Vanderbilt last week, Florida this week. So just tremendous baseball um, for our fans, for our players, for everybody involved. So um, got to prepare well because you got a really good team coming in. You have a question, please raise your hand. We'll start with Colin. Hey, Mark. Um, I'm curious, you guys obviously face Kumar Rocker and, and Jack Leiter back to back. What's what does that teach you guys, your team, heading into this week and where you obviously have Mason Leftwich back to back Friday, Saturday? Yeah, I was, I'm very familiar with Tommy Mace from USA Baseball a couple uh, summers ago. He was on the team. And so, uh, and I also go back to knowing him from when we were in Tampa. That's where he's from. And so we recruited him some there before he decided to go to Florida. Um, so he's, uh, you know, he's a obviously outstanding pitcher, as is Leftwich, as is Barco. So uh, it's a very similar pitching staff. Obviously, Vanderbilt's pitching staff is, is one of the top in the country, and I would put Florida right there with them. So I just think it teaches guys um, the adjustments they need to make to hit that type of velocity, to be able to hit the, that type of breaking stuff. So you just hope that it's a learning process and that every week you get a little bit better with it. Tom? Yeah, just what did you learn from your team, especially offensively going up to Vanderbilt? And what are some things now that you've seen Sunday and, and last night that you'd like to see change and adjusted as you get into weekend two of SEC play? Well, I like scoring runs on Sunday and, and on, on last night, uh, obviously. So that's I like seeing that. Um, I didn't like the results we had on Friday and Saturday. But again, we went up against two uh, almost transcendent type pitchers. So, look, it's baseball. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. And. You just have to try to stay as even keel as you can through the ups and downs. Uh, there's going to be a lot of great games we play, and there's going to be some struggles uh, against great teams, and there's going to be some times where you do everything right and you still lose because SEC baseball is, is better than it has ever been. So, again, I think the message is just continue to learn about yourself, about your team, what adjustments we need to make, um, and, and try to stay as even keel as possible uh, to deal with the ups and the downs. Great. Mark, sorry if you've addressed this before or not, um, but I was just kind of curious how you evaluate the third base position moving forward. What, 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 do you need to see more consistency out of that spot? And yeah, we do. There's no do question. You, you know, I think we're settled in most positions right now, but third base is still, uh, you know, it's, it's Malone, it's Heinrich, it can be Satterfield. Um, Michael Robinson has gone over there in a defensive capacity. So, um, yeah, that's still a position we'd like to see settled. Um, we have some good options, but but all those guys need to play, you know, more at the top of their game consistently. When they do that, I think the position will be fine. We just haven't gotten to that point yet. Colin? Mark, do you know what your rotation is going to look like this weekend? Yeah, we'll go far Jordan and TBA. Okay. And that's the plan in terms of just Brett Carey. Is it you wait and see how you use him the first two days, or how do you go into the weekend knowing – or not knowing where, whether or not you're going to use bread or not. So you're asking for the state secrets now. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I thought I answered your question, Colin, when I said you're very good Jordan and TBA. You're very good. <laughs> Just, what, or I'll follow that up with what have you seen from Brett Carey to where he's a guy that you can use in a lot of different capacities? Uh, that's exactly what I would say. Is there, he's, he's kind of the Wimmer of the pitching staff. You know, Wimmer can play first, second, center, left, short, third. He can play anywhere. And so I would say – Carry gives us the flexibility um, to start him, use him in the middle of the game, close him. Um, he's a Swiss Army knife, so we want to try to use him to get the most important outs and, and the most of those outs uh, that we possibly can. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. May I also have a question? Tom. I guess one more for me. I feel like I've asked you 16. The Colin Taylor show here. Today. Yeah, it feels like the 16 Zoom call. Uh, <laughs> Andrews Eisters maybe scuffled a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Just is that a guy you're going to let hit out of his little skid or is it something where you maybe look to give him a day off over the next couple of games? He's too proven over the course of now. This is his third year with us. He's a lifetime 300 hitter um, and he came into our program as an established hitter. So he's he has enough equity that you just kind of let him hit his way out of it. Now, at some point, does that mean you don't? give him a day off to catch his breath. Maybe we do that at some point, but he's a guy that needs to be a big part of our offense and, and he is a proven commodity and he'll figure this thing out. No question. Phil? 
for the uninformed, which would include me, uh, is there a, a physical issue with Bosnick or is this performance related? Uh, this is just trying to do what's best for our team based on how guys are trending. Uh, that's probably the best way I can answer that question. Bosnick is still a very important piece of our weekend uh, and getting a lot of innings. It just we're going to keep our options open to see how the series develops.